Okay, yeah. Away. Step number one. Shut up. Shut up. When the sound guy is oh, trying to gosh. check a particular instrument that's not your instrument. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Family. To the Musicology Podcast Which on the Drum still, Tracks it's, app. It's still called that today because no one has sent us a cease and desist letter. And you guys haven't given us another name. So, but that is the name. If someone else has it already, or doesn't have it already, but if they do have it, ideas, comments. We're out here. Uh, download the Jump Tracks app right now. Hurry you, up. You might as well. And uh, I'm Legendaries51. Sam God. My name's Damani, and I'm the founder of Drum Tracks. And uh, today we're going to talk to you a little bit about sound and how to deal with your sound and how to deal with sound guys and sound, sound, sound. Being sound in your sound. Can you hear us, though? Because, I mean, it'd be terrible Check. Is this thing on? There's no sound. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> no, we're good. I see. It's but yeah, this is an it. important part of being a musician, you know, is, is how, how do you get yourself to sound the way you want to sound on stage? Yeah. How yeah. do you communicate with the sound guy so that you sound good? Yeah. And then also, how does that translate to what people are hearing out in the audience? Because there's two sounds. There's yep. the sound you're hearing and there's the sound they're hearing. Yes. You know what I've noticed though a lot is that I've been I've seen musicians, especially like with newer guys that are just coming out, and even some people who've been doing it for a while, they have no idea how to sound check. Straight they up. They go to sound yeah. check and it is just a circus. Yeah. Yep. And the sound yeah. man is pissed off and he's frustrated. There's no one leading it. There's no one yeah. Even if there's no one leading it, there's usually when you work with professional musicians, they know they've been there, they've done that. They know the steps. Yep. Yeah, and there's kind is. of a there's kind of this ceremony. There's like this <laughs> dance that's happening yeah. in the sound yeah. check, and sometimes there's a there's like a method to it. Yeah, and you're following the steps, and it's yep. like okay, this makes sense. And sometimes it's all over the place. And, but I've been yes. in sound checks where the band was like all over the place, but the sound man himself was experienced. Right, yes. and he was like, wait a minute. I just need this. Yes, and he would yeah. and he would dial them in. Um, okay, yeah. Anyway. Step number one. Shut up. Shut up. When the sound guy is oh, trying to gosh. check a particular instrument that's not your instrument. <laughs> yeah. Rule number one. And, and it's, it's no when to shut yeah, up. It's not always just because you can't hear it yet doesn't mean it's your time to yell out, I don't have any bass. Right. Because uh, he might be dialing that in the front of the house first, and then he's going to ask you, okay, now tell me if you need more bass. Yes. There's a whole. That's the process. Here's what we're going to tell you 90% of the time, just wait, and then the sound guy is going to ask you, everybody that wants bass, raise your hand. And then you politely raise your hand until you hear it, and then put your hand down. <laughs> Keep that finger up. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it up until, until it's where you, you want it. it. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it, like you said, it is a dance. It's, it's this whole ritual that goes on before the show, and it happens every time, most times. Unless you have, I mean, even if you have your own sound guy, your own sound guy kind of knows... Which is great. Yeah, if he's yes. got a digital board and he has all the settings dialed in, yeah, and yeah. every night you're just getting up there and you might have to tweak a couple things because the yep. room sounds a little different, but yep. you're dialed in, you know. But you know, if you're going to like, like we were talking about festivals, yeah. like you're going in there just dealing with God knows what. Yeah. Well, know? first of all, if you're playing a festival and you're not the headliner, nobody cares about your sound setup. Right. I've at been at all. so many situations where. We've done sound check for 20 minutes, and they said they have our sound dialed in and saved in their new digital board, right? Yeah. And, oh, it's saved. We'll just recall it when it's time for your... Bro, they don't even remember the artist's name that's going up when that they sound check. They don't know whose setting is what. You were playing with the setting from four bands ago, <laughs> yeah. and everybody's playing with those. Because, like, I swear to God, it's just, it just made me feel like, why go to these sound checks when there's 50 people on the bill? Because they're not going to have the sound right. And maybe it's just me and my experiences, because I've always been the guy playing for the artist that is not high on the bill, or been the artist that's not high on the bill. And you just come to just realize... Chances are it's going to be trash. But with that said, I have developed a few tactics that made myself memorable to the sound man. Okay. And I'll, I'll talk about I'll talk about that in in in, in a minute. I, I don't want to I don't want to hog the mic. But uh, at the end of the day, playing at festivals, 
for me has been like, okay, the sound's typically not the greatest for you. At least, even if they can't well, great out in the house on stage. Also, if you're like opening so for a band and they have their sound guy running sound, he's going to make the opening band not sound as good <laughs> as the headliner. Yeah, straight up. Or it's going to be quieter or it, it's yeah. just, it's a competitive thing. Yeah. They, they do do that, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you got to be prepared for that. But there's not much you can do about that, really. But if you're opening for the headliner and you, and you can, smash the headliner out. Like, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've seen that happen. I've been in bands that have done that. Yeah. Um, where the opening act is just better than the, the headliner, and then maybe the next time they won't treat you so bad, or they might try to do your sound wars. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. but at the end of the day, just play your best and have a good time, even if the sound is not going to be the best. But like I said, I'll get into it in a minute. There's some things that I've done with sound men that make them be like, oh, you know what? I think I like this guy. We might treat him better. Um, it's also important to be uh, somewhat patient with the process. Mm -hmm. I am impatient with sound checks. <laughs> so I'm like, let, I don't want to play a whole song. I don't even want to really play more than a verse at a time. Let's play a verse and then let's stop. Hey, can I get a little more of this? Can I get a little more of that? Is everybody good? All right, now let's play something loud. Everybody good? All right, we done. Right, like, but everyone yeah, yeah, speak yeah. up, you know, because like don't sit back there and be quiet and you and, and you're thinking, man, I can't hear something. I mean, bring it up, you know, yeah. make sure that someone listens to you because but I mean, and sometimes you get the grumpy sound man syndrome. This is like yeah. a common thing, you know, Very common. They'd be like you'd be act, act, asking for more uh, vocal or something and yep. they're like, ah. More, <laughs> and then they'll be like, "I have it like all the way up." You're like, "Well, I can't hear it." You don't have it all the way up. Yeah. You might have the fader up, but you have the gain at the top of the board all the way down. And like exactly, there's another yeah. knob in yeah. the signal chain somewhere. Yeah, you're just not. You're refusing to play because the last band pissed you off, right? So now mm -hmm. I'm mad at the rest of them. I'm, what uh, gig was that where the sound man would just moan and groan for every request? It was. I think it was don't, the don't board do it. wall. Don't do it. I he think, did it. I, <laughs> he did it. <laughs> We're not oh, naming you, you names. No, I, I just didn't want to name no names because I, I got. Guy is. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I have no idea what his name is. <laughs> I just know that when I played there, and this was like seven, eight years ago. Okay. When I played there, I played a gig for somebody there, and if you want to know, look up the boardwalk it, seven, eight years it ago. It wasn't <laughs> even. It wasn't even. He wasn't even doing it to me. He did do it to me at a certain <clears> point, but he was doing it to up uh, to everybody. Any musician be like, can I get a guitar player? I'm going to be a more guitar. Oh, my God. Like, what are you? I don't understand. I'll turn it up. But, geez. And I'm just sitting there like, wow, this guy's really mad about this right now. I saw that recently, and I'm going to leave it at that. I saw something like that recently <laughs> like, locally. I why was are like, you mad Whoa. for what I need? It doesn't affect you back there, but you're mad. I, I, well, no, and not only that. Your whole job is to touch the fader that I need. That's <laughs> yeah. your whole job. That's right what now. you're here for. You like, know, <laughs> it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's it's. You're a not wild. going anywhere. You're here. <laughs> yes, it's a wild situation. Now, another thing that I've seen in sound checks that have really, like, I've played for artists who, and not just even artists. Sometimes I've seen this at churches too. When you're sound checking before the service, and for some reason they think that they are supposed to be determining what is heard in the house from the stage. Right. And that's something we got to clear up right here and now. <laughs> hey. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, you realize that what you hear up here, it is not a reflection of what is heard out there. Like, right. the sound could be amazing out there while it's trash up here. And the sound could be amazing up here while it's trash out there. Like, just because you're in, a, in a, and of course, especially if you're in, a, in any type of sizable room, it's like, you can't determine what's happening out there from here. If you're an artist, yeah. your best bet is unless you have a second person's ear that you trust who is in the house helping you hear what you need and telling the sound man what it should sound like, you are literally just having to trust whatever is happening because there's no way that you can determine what is happening on the stage from the house. I've I mean, seen, on the house from the stage. That's not really your concern, I mean, to a certain extent because you can't hear that. You know, you're just want to have a good listening situation on stage, right. but you got to trust what's going on out there. And if you are going to have someone approach the sound guy and tell them how the mix should sound out front, make sure they're very diplomatic about yes. <laughs> how they do it. Because and that they understand nothing, terms and concepts. Nothing that kind of, yeah, like nothing pisses off a sound guy more than some random person coming up and being like, 
the vocals should be louder or something yeah. like that. Right. Like, and I, and I, I, I do have to say this. For those of you guys who play in church, 90% of the time... Your sound man has he doesn't know anything about sound. <laughs> he's probably a volunteer. He's a volunteer. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's 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 giving his service to the Lord. Try not to be so hard on him because yeah. he has absolutely no idea what he's doing. <laughs> and that's just the fact. I'm not I'm not here trying to uh trying to knock there and, and unless you play at a church with a sound man that actually does know what he's doing, I'm fortunate to play at a church. Well, I play at multiple churches, and one of the churches I play at the sound man is a professional. It sounds great. If there's an issue, you can talk to him. He you know, he can yeah. figure it out. The uh, one of the other churches that I play at, the sound man is just the choir director's husband, or you know one of the deacons, or whoever is there to turn the soundboard on that morning. Yeah. And sometimes it's the the choir director while she's also singing, running sound. You know what I'm saying? And it's like mm-hmm. you can't when when you're in that situation, you can't be like, "What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Why is it you can't do that?" Because, at the, you know, you, you got to understand where you're at. But, like, for gigs, I just wanted to put that disclaimer out because I know there's a lot of church drummers who watch the channel. And so I don't want them to think that they need to go back on Sunday morning and try, and try to tell their sound man a thing or two. I'm just saying. Right. I saw this podcast. <laughs> We're changing things around here. Yeah. Yeah. you got to know the skill level of the person you're dealing with. Right. And their temperament. That's right. part of the dance. Because, I mean, listen, it could be a lot worse. Right. right. <laughs> Don't let him get mad. And all he knows how to do is use the fader because he will turn you down. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? <laughs> I feel like everyone should learn a thing or two about what the sound guy is doing. You know, yes. like yes, get, familiarize yourself with the terms and the signal chain and all that. So because you're, you're getting into it. Go ahead. Keep everyone, on. you know, like I do lots of gigs where we're just playing at some bar and there is no sound guy. Yeah. And we're just doing our own sound from the stage, yep. you know? So you got to know they might have a little mixer and you might want to know like how to hook the mic in and make sure the speakers are working because there's no sound guy there. Yeah. <laughs> Shady lady. Uh, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Name and names. Hey, yo, you're playing there every week right now, right? Or is it like, no, no, just every once in a while. Oh, because it looked like y'all was going for like a minute, and I told uh, Lim that I wanted to come check you guys out. Oh, well, that was because I did uh, I did my own project under my name yeah. with Lim on drums, and then like two weeks later, he booked a project that's his project Got that you. I was in, but it was like other different cats, oh. but it was me and Lim on both gigs. See, and yeah. I play with Lim all the I play music with Lim all the time, yes. and he did not mention anything about it so but that's that uh, well shout out limb <laughs> gotta do homie. some better promo man but uh, uh yeah no nah, okay so you started getting into the things that matter when it comes to uh how to be memorable to a sound man right there's a few things like i did intentionally when i was at city college uh taking music theory and jazz improv and all that i took a sound course and i learned uh about signal flow that's what it's called guys signal flow that's all, like when you deal with sound systems, everything that's happening is about signal flow. And it's the same thing in a studio too. You go into the studio, it's all about signal flow. How to get the sound into the microphone, which turns it into an electrical signal, sends it through the cable into whatever else it's going into. That same signal after it goes through whatever it's going through, goes out into the board. Or if you're in the studio uh, from the board, back out to the interface, into the converters, gets turned into zeros and ones, goes into the computer, records, gets sent back out of the converters and back down the signal chain so it goes out into the speakers, which is then that electrical signal is converted back into sound, which our ears hear, and then our eardrums take that and turn it into an electrical signal so that our brains can understand and tell us what is happening. It turns into synapses in our brain. Now we're, we're... We're going deep. Science, guys. It. Science. No, <laughs> Let's uh, go. Bill Nye and him. But at the end of the day, <laughs> one of the main things that have helped me to make sure that I have the best possible outcome with a sound man. Number one, get his name. Straight Don't call up. him Mr. Sound go. Man. Don't say, hi, sound man, or hey, sound guy. Walk up to him before you're sound checking and say, hey, my name is Damani. I'm, I'm, I'm playing today. Or my name is whatever your name is. You don't even have to mention that you're playing today, especially if you're not holding your instrument. Just be a person. Yeah. And and say, hi, my name is such and such. What What's your name? It looks like you're doing sound. What's your name? Oh, my name is such and such. Okay. Oh, hey, such and such. And now remember such and such's name. Yes. So when it's your turn to go up, you could say, hey, Bill, da 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 And he was like, oh, okay, yeah, da 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 And after he does it, thanks, Bill. Like, re- say his name again. 
Say his name like not, don't be weird about it, but make sure you repeat his name to him because he'll know you're talking to him. He know that you remembered his name. You know, you saw him. He's not just the sound guy, this utility that nobody cares about that gets the brunt of a lot of people's frustration because they feel like the sound is supposed to be this yes. thing and he's right. supposed to already know. And, and sometimes there's this like, feeling of a hierarchy where exactly. musicians act like they're like above right the i'm the artist you're just the sound something. guy yeah, yeah but if you if you relate to him as a person and you let him know that you see him and recognize that he's there as a human and that what he's contributing is valuable he's it's it's a step closer to him remembering you because not everybody does that and then and it, it can fix the whole band because sometimes there are other members in the group that you're playing with that don't do that. Yes. And when you do that, you get favor. But as you keep doing that, he's like, all right, I'll give the whole band favor. Yeah. Just based on you. And like right. everybody yeah. gets that dialed in spread. a little better. That just makes it a better vibe all yeah. around. Right. Yeah. Number two, like Sam said, learn the language. Yeah. You have to be able to speak the sound man's language so that he knows not only does he know that you see him as a person, but he now respects what you're saying because he thinks you know what you're talking about yeah. because you're using the language. Now, if you're like, if it's just too loud, you can say, hey, I can use, you know, can I get like it down? I don't know. Like I would just like 3 dB, maybe 4 dB. Right. And he, even though there's no dB sign on there, you said dB. What? That's, that's a volume thing. That's a, yeah. that's a term that most regular people don't know. He must really respect what I'm doing. Not right. just, he right. knows, he respects it enough to know something about it. <clears throat> then right. you say, Okay, uh, if it's not that it's too loud, but it's there's too many highs, you can say, hey. Right, EQ, that's can important. You, can you, and the more specific you can be about your suggestion, or, about, or not even about your suggestion, about your request, because remember, the, a lot of times, the sound man is not on the stage while he's giving you your mix on the stage. Now there are, I've been at the festivals, like we did the Black Joy Parade. Man, there's more, like right before we did this podcast, I said I never played any festivals and I keep thinking of <laughs> right. all You're the like, festivals. Oh, like we did. <laughs> there was that one and that one? Yeah, but like I've been in plenty of uh, festivals, I guess, where there is a completely different sound man in an entirely different system for the stage. And yeah, there's a monitor dude and there's a front of house dude. And not only yeah. is there a monitor dude right. and a front of house dude, there's a monitor system on the stage, yes. yes. And a and a front of house system. You got to know who you're talking to when yes. you're making your request. And if you yeah. have that, if you have that, do not make your request to the front of house guy because he right. he has nothing to do with what's happening up there. Correct. But when you talk to the to the to the uh, sound man, if you can make your request as specific as possible, yeah. then he'll be able to he'll know exactly what to do. It saves him time of trying to figure out what you mean, so you're not speaking in these esoteric creative terms like I'm not. Getting the vibe, I feel like it's red right now, and I need it to be blue. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been with one of those artists. Oh, before. totally, definitely. Totally. Using like adjectives that make no sense for music, right? And they you expect know? you to know what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. They're just like it sounds just kind of grayish, and you yeah, know, I, just need, I just need it to be like magenta. Or they'll say flat or something like that. It's like no, that's what you say about a note. That's right. Not, like you the, know. one of the things. It sounds you, a little sandy right yeah. now. Can you make it like smooth? <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm like, yo, like the only thing that the only adjective that you can say that's not really a musical term, but that is, is used a lot for sound guys is wet and dry. Yes. Yeah. If the effect, but those are music terms. I mean, but, it's music well, slang. But, but for yeah, for, yeah. for for engineer, yeah, for our, yeah, when yeah. you're talking about adding reverb or effects, yeah. If it's too much, you'd be like, yo, it's a little wet on the stage. You, yeah, yeah. We, we right. Wanna, we, and they'll know what you mean. We don't want it completely dry, but we can, that all that means yeah. is. Oh, let me turn down the effects. Yeah. Let me maybe it doesn't need as much. And if there's a specific effect that you hear too much of, you know what I'm saying? That type of thing, it just lets it, it lets the um, sound man feel seen, respected, and know that his craft is respected because you respect it enough to know something about it. Yeah. And right. now you can communicate with him in a way that is memorable to him because most people are not doing that. Yes. And sound guys will generally do a better job the more professional you are. Yes. Because you just have a better idea of how you want to sound. Yes. You spent more time going deep on that. And yes. they just, they pick up on that. Right. Because you know? generally people that are more professional, when they get up there, their sound is more dialed in already. Like, yeah. oh, because your tone is everything. Fast. I mean, right. drums keys, bass, any instrument, work on your tone. Yeah. yeah. Make sure your tone, spend some time not just on your plane, but making sure your tone is good. Right, your sound. That's a big part of it. And 100%. like you mentioned like the EQ, like the highs, lows, and mids, like 
learn what all that is because a lot of times people are just turning things up or down. Yes. And and it's not a volume issue. Right. You can't just keep turning up. You need to cut the lows out of the vocals or something like that or turn up the mids on something. Yes. You know? And understanding how much you're turning up your mids and your lows and your highs affects your volume without you even touching the volume at all. Exactly. No, because it, it does. It's Because all the all the EQ yeah. is is a volume knob for certain frequencies in the spectrum. And all, yeah. what the volume knob does is turn up all the frequencies in the spectrum at the same time. Um, but that's just what it is. My last suggestion for you, though, after you do all the other things aforementioned, is to go to the sound man afterwards. First of all, while, no, right after your sound check, while you're still up on the stage and everybody can see you, thank the sound man openly for what he did for you after you've been nice to him and he did all the stuff you asked. Be like, hey, Bill, thank you, bro. It sounds amazing up here. Mm -hmm. And then go down afterwards, you know, before the show starts, go up to him again and be like, hey, Bill, man, I just really, I just want to let you know I appreciate what you're doing back here, man, the sound, da 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 and, and, you know, and then be a human, you know, don't make it weird. Have a regular conversation for, I don't know, 60 seconds and go on about your day. That investment of time and energy with the sound man will result in a better outcome most times. Now, if you're at a festival, like we've talked about, that sound man might not have the time for all of that. And, you know, you could just be as nice as you possibly can and hope to be remembered. Uh, but that I'm not, I can't, I can't guarantee you that at the festival. And you might only have people. like 15 minutes to set up and sound check. And he might've just been working for like 12 Let hours straight. Let me give straight. you guys a pro tip. Okay. Cause this is something <laughs> we go. did because of this, okay. because of this, there was plenty of times we would go perform and there would be no sound check. Your sound check right. is your first song. Mm -hmm. Write a sound check song. Oh. Write a sound check song. That's what we did. Nice. We wrote a sound check song. Which one was and, it? Huh? Which one was it? This is not for me, no. This is when we were traveling back and forth with Vadia doing okay. tons of shows in LA as you know, record labels and stuff was Shout courting out her. the queen. Yes. But when we did all of that, we ended up writing a sound check. Because again, you know, I, I even saw this recently when I was doing sound at a So Far Sound show where the artist wanted to sound check, but his sound check was rehearsing all the way through every one of his songs of the set. Trash. I That's not to, a sound check. <laughs> that is a rehearsal. Yeah. I wanted to stop him and be like, hey, bro, you don't, you shouldn't do that. There's Ever. like half the audience is here. Yeah. But right. um, <laughs> you're going to play all these songs again. <laughs> yeah. So like we didn't want to do that, but we got to a point where we didn't even want the other artists who were in the sound check to know what we were performing that night. Mm. So um. we would rehearse our tails off. Like I remember one, one show we did, we, we, we rehearsed our tails off and we did the sound check song, right? But because we knew that there was a bunch of artists performing that night, we did the sound check song first anyway. When we got when it was time to perform, we did the sound check song again to make sure that everything. Because oh, and if you're using tracks, we had tracks, and we had sounds in the sound check song. So we, you're talking about a song that's the first song of your set if you don't have time to sound check. No, we literally wrote a sound check song. We did it at sound check. We wrote it. Okay, first we wrote it. Uh, we wrote it for two reasons. One because we knew that we were playing a bunch of shows where a lot of artists, like showcases and stuff like that. Yeah. And so we would do this song for Soundcheck and the song was literally a Soundcheck song and the lyrics of the song was Soundcheck. Oh, okay. And we, but the music was wild. We were going like, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was two minutes of like fire. Yeah, it really yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. Harmonies was fire. Everything straight was. straight virtuosity. <laughs> everything was nuts. But like, can we hear? Because once we, when we come down to doing the regular stuff, we want it to sound good. Yeah. And if we can hear what's going on in this. So what were the characteristics of it that made it a sound check song to you? Um, like, did it, it just cover all the bases? It was like long it enough. It was long harmonies. enough. Yes. It had every, everything playing. Everyone's that song. playing, obviously. Right. Yeah. And so everyone was playing. The backgrounds had their vocal parts as well. And if it was enough time, so that if there was something missing, we can request that the sound man do it during the middle of the sound check song, mm -hmm. or right after the sound check song, we can say, "Hey, da 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 da." And the song was so obviously a sound check song because the lyrics of the song was "sound check, sound check, checking our mics, checking our levels, make sure the sound's right." Those are the lyrics of the song, and then it would just be "sound check, sound check, hey, sound check, sound check." That was the song. That's lit. And That's we, fire. but the music was. We were going, right? Going in there. <laughs> yeah. and, and like drum, there's licks, space for drum fills, drum, space for everything that you need to check. Yeah. Right, right. And, and once it was done, 
we are sound, maybe that the sound wasn't right and it didn't sound great. Well, now the audience knows and we know and the sound man is kind of on the spot, but we're still talking to him nice. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, hey, could you guys hear that? And they were like, yeah, I can hear it, da 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 da. And we would go on and do the set. And when we didn't have, when we did have a sound check, we still did the sound check song. Yeah. Yeah. That was our sound check. Because the right. artists who were, that we, when we would, uh, other artists were in the room for sound check. That was, we never, we stopped rehearsing or we stopped playing any of what we were doing on the set, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so with Mino, though, what we ended up doing is if we were sound checking a song, we would just sound check a song we're not playing that night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's like rule number one of sound checks. Yeah. Like, like don't play the, a song during the sound check that's in your set. Now, see, I, I, I agree and disagree with that. Okay. And here's why. I think that oftentimes it depends on the song that you're playing because I've played with people who do that, but they're not necessarily picking the best song that can represent a good sound check. Well, that's because they're so, idiots, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. But, but, uh, but it also, like, you have to have something that represents what you're actually going to be playing. Absolutely. Well, it depends if there's people in the room already, too. If there's no one in the room, it doesn't really matter. You know yeah. what I mean? To an extent. But, again, like you said earlier, we can't control what's out there. Right. And so, right. like, we have to hope that the sound man has an idea of what it's supposed to sound like. Yeah. And when we start, when we were playing with Mino, though, we got to a point where we weren't, when we would play shows, if we were opening for somebody, it was, like, a big somebody, like, a decent-sized somebody. Yeah. And so, but there wouldn't be, like, we weren't doing thousands of people shows. Or when I say thousands of people shows, where there's, like, 50 artists that are performing. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And if there was, like, we, one of the gigs that we played that I really enjoyed was when we played the San Jose Museum. There was a jazz, San Jose Jazz Festival, Winter Jazz Festival, and we played in, at the San Jose Museum. And uh, there, was a, there was, like, a couple bands that played before us, and we were playing last that night, but they gave us a decent sound check, like, right before we were, like, a little small intermission. Yes. And that was cool, but, like, I don't know. I just feel like... If you treat the sound man nice and hope for the best, those are your two options right there. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't guarantee you a great sound night. Right. But, to, but, but being courteous to the sound man goes a thousand miles. Yeah. Just be nice, be nice. And, like and that's regular saying, life advice in general. Yeah. I mean, that's people skills. Yeah. You know? You got to have people skills when you work in this business, people. Period. Skills. That's but all I, we do it. is interact with people. Yeah. I think we're about to run out of time on the camera, so we might want to wrap this one up. Yeah. Be nice to the sound guy and, and, and dial in your tone and it, listen it, to the mic. Check mind. everything. Remember yeah. to check every instrument. Right. And, and, and what you were, on what you were saying and choosing a right song for sound check, real quick, because I did want to mention this, is make sure that you do choose a song that at least has all of the elements of what you're going to do that night. It doesn't yes. have to be the, a song or come up with something that allows you to check everything like that. Yeah, you if, there's a, you know, if there's a guy that just does backup vocals on a couple songs or something, make sure he, you know, yeah, he's, he's doing backup vocals yes. Yes. on the sound yes. check song. It's period. So, and yeah, and be nice, be a good And guitar person. players, turn down. Turn your amp down. <laughs> hey, hey, here's, here's, here's just what I want to say about myself. I'm the best at it because they have to tell me to turn up. <laughs> well, there you go. You well, know what I'm saying? And drummers. And I know we're on, we're on a soapbox now. Yeah. <laughs> and drummers, like, do, do us a favor, and when you sound check, don't play every lick you know. Play each drum separately in space notes. So, like, snare, 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 until he says go to the tongue. And do the same thing there. Then he'll tell you to play a groove. But don't play the craziest groove. Boom, cat, doom, cut the doom, boom. Dude, yep. cut the dude. Like, that lets you know what it is. But I know the yes. camera's going to cut off, so I'm not going to hold you. We'll, we might do a part two today. Hey, Musicology, Legendary is 51. Sam God's in the building. My name's Damani. And I'm the founder of Drum Tracks. I'm going to holler at you guys on the next one. Download Drum Tracks right now. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Like. Our producer in the back there is telling us to like, to tell you guys to like, subscribe, comment, comment share. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. On the next one, y'all. Holla. Peace. Fam, it's your boy Damani. I hope you enjoyed the video that you just watched. And I hope you liked the video. I hope you left the comment. And I wanted to invite you into Drum Tracks Premium. We literally have over 350 drum lessons, over 250, over 300 by now, drumless tracks, a community in the private Facebook group of drummers that we go live with and do live drum coaching every single week. We want to help you find your voice and explore your creativity on the drums. And we can do that with Drum Tracks Premium. It's only 99 cents to sign up. So you can find 
the links in the description of this video. And also, if you're just looking to stream tracks, you can also find our streaming subscription where you can stream all of the tracks and all of the tracks that we ever add for just $5.99 a month. And if you're looking for more content, you can click one of the videos that are showing up on the screen right now and check them out. All right, fam? I look forward to seeing you in more videos and I look forward to seeing you in Drum Tracks Premium. All right, fam. Peace.